Hello, well, how are you? I am, an, I am amazing today. How are you? Doing good. I caught the end of the other interview. You are <laughs> well, Ramona's good people. She just is like solid, solid people. So I'm glad to have you on and get to yes. know more about who you are. And, and, and so just let's just jump right in, okay? okay? Absolutely. Tell me about how you are as a young woman who has become a lifestyle blogger. Wh where did you come from? Like, tell me about your, your childhood. Sure. I am originally from Atlanta. One of the few people you would ever meet that's originally from here. So I'm proud to say that I will represent the 404 all day. <laughs> from here. I love East Atlanta. Um, I was in media. That was my major in college at University mm. of West Georgia. So I've been in media love for it. over 15, what, 17 years since I graduated. It's crazy. All right. So yeah, being at CNN, I like to do social media management for my friends. I just love media. I watch the politics, the bloggers. I try to support a lot of my friends doing different businesses and stuff like that. So it's just really a passion and to just mm -hmm. kind of full circle and to be on your site right now, it's just, it's kind of coming full circle. So I'm super excited about that. But it's well, been like, it's not been an overnight process. I'm sure you know, it takes a long time and this is a tough business. It's oh, it is. Oh my it is. It is. It is absolutely. And to your point about taking a long time, you know, it, this is nothing that new for me. Like I've been doing some of the stuff that people see me doing now. Right. They're like, well, how, how are you doing this? And how are you doing it? Well, right. and I'm just like, well, you know, you didn't see me like, it's you know, like David on the backside of a mountain, yep. you know, working on something, you know, you didn't see it. You know, yep. you didn't see when I was carrying somebody's bags. You didn't see you know, all those kind of things when I was doing all the grunt work. So I understand completely, you yes. know, and, and it only makes you stronger. It only makes it you a better person. Absolutely. Yes. I agree. Yes. I mean, it, it's been 2019 going into 2020. It's been one of the toughest years of my life. Extremely. Tell me about that. How, how has it, how has the transition into this year uh, affected your, your life? It's interesting you say that because at the end of the year, AT&T bought out Turner Broadcasting. So to go through a corporate transition, yeah, they didn't need two people to do my job. And mm. you know, the politics scene. There oh, I know that. Need for me to do that. Our job was always to protect the journalists, Jim Acosta, mm. um, you know, Robin Mead and stuff like that. So they eliminated my role. So wow. I had to quickly think on my feet, like, what can I do to keep working? And that's when I started writing articles for the Atlanta Voice the same month. It's wow. Consistent, but you know, being a 1099, you have to like hustle and figure it out. So going into 2020, it's been the same thing, sending resumes all the time, homeschooling, because I'm a mom, all from mm -hmm. home. Yes. Out to PR agencies and stuff. So it, like you said, it just makes you stronger. So I'm absolutely grateful and appreciative. How is it right now being a mom during this time? Like what, what would be the number one thing that you feel like you learned that you didn't realize about anything when it comes to motherhood in, during quarantine? You have to be strong. I have <laughs> one child. So you have to think about, we may do social distancing. How do I keep him engaged? I can't put him in summer camp because the camp right? he was going to, they're not doing it. So I'm thinking, mm. what can I do to keep him engaged? I Google STEM activities, um, virtual activities, music, little websites to play music and give him the, um, what is it? Coding and stuff like that. I have to be, on my feet. I've posted videos of me working out with him in our living room. I'm not even like really good on my fitness. I suck at fitness right now because I'm doing so many different things. So right. I'm just being on top of thinking off the cuff and just being consistent and thinking of things to keep him engaged so he doesn't feel like he's by himself. That's the mm. driving force of me, my child. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. And with, when it comes to, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's what makes a lot of parents, especially single parents, so strong, the ability to be able to balance so yes. many things at one time. What do you feel like right now is the hardest thing to balance out of all of them? I think the hardest thing for me right now is knowing that I have to get the income to come in. It's not a traditional, we're in a farm where you're in the middle of a job, applying for jobs and you have social distancing. You have to think quickly. I can't mm -hmm. give up. I have to prioritize my time. So during the day I'm working with him, then I have to stay up later at night and be on my laptop. And then I also teach VIP kids. I'm a 1099 contractor. So mm -hmm. I'm constantly trying to think of balancing my time. I use a whiteboard. 
a little notepad to write things down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I have to be extremely organized. That's the most difficult thing. I um, get work -life you know, I, I have learned how to use post uh, these postcards yeah. here. Um, these have actually, these index cards have saved my life. I know, I'm, um, I'm saying I, I mean, I write it yes, down. I put my whole to-do list on here today. Me too. And I flip it over. Me too. I gotta do it. How else are we gonna stay sane, right? That's it. Yeah. Because it can't all stay up here, right? No, not at all. It can't, not, not for it to work and be balanced. Right. Uh, speaking of balance, what, what do you feel like is your best technique to stay balanced? My best technique? That's a good one. Um, I have a great support system. I have, in the last few weeks, I have a really good girlfriend who's did these Zoom calls. So we have themes. So it gets my mind triggering to think, what can I do to be a better person, to go back yes. to my vision board? I have several vision boards, but I always go back to one of my first original boards. Mm. It was a book I read from Valerie, I think her name was Valerie Burton, Successful Women Think Differently. Mm. So I compartmentalize my different areas of life and that keeps me organized. So I'm, I try to stay organized and write things down and try to consistently look back at my vision boards. What's one of your highlighted things on your vision board that you really are aiming for in this year? Now, it would be, I'm actually, I would love to work remote. I think I, think I can get so much done working remote. I did corporate America for 15 years. So I want to transition into working remote. I want to make sure that I build my son's self-confidence up as he goes to mm. middle school, because that's such an, a pivotal year going into 12 years old so i want to yes. make sure i still can work at home and still build him as a person at the same time so i, I look at women's like uh, michelle obama's becoming that's just something that just really inspired me i had her book mm -hmm. so it just made me feel so good inside you know so because she was behind a powerful man but she never lost our identity so that's that's one thing that's, she's on my vision board too i love that she is on your board. Uh, what What would you say other than her not losing her character? What is one other thing that you really connect with about Michelle Obama? Um, she's a mom. She cared about fitness. She befriend people. She, she was um, appreciative to military wives. I really respect mm -hmm. that. I have a lot of people in my family who served in the military. So that's something yes. of passion for me, too. Because you just want to make sure you don't forget about other people and say, take the time to say thank you. And you just never know what people are going through. Like you said, that hug saved your life. You just never know. It Just being able to be a person to hit so many different platforms, that's something that inspires me. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, I do want, as a single mom, please tell us, because there are so many people out there who... You know, they have children and they, they, they are single and they're struggling to find love. Uh, what, where are you with it? Is it a struggle? Are you peaceful? Where, where are you right now with that? Um, I just now really have put more attention and focus in the last month. I won't lie. I've been on Bumble for over a year, mm. hinge for a few months, and this is bad. I'm just now responding back to people. So as soon as they respond, I hit it back. But it's, it's been, dating is really weird because for me, I won't bring a man around my child unless I know that there's a serious situation. I'm very protective and you just don't know what people's situations are. So I feel mm. like you need to get to have some conversations first, get through that kind of initial phase and then see where it goes and let it flow. But everybody doesn't see it that way. <laughs> Absolutely. So you said you are with those dating apps. You are in a space now yep. where you have more peace. Yes. So now okay. the school is out since last week in DeKalb County. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit, I feel a little bit more freer to do that. But I've been responding back to the messages. I surely have. Awesome. So the messages. Gotcha. Uh, but you were already on the apps. What led you there initially? Well, I've had conversations with girlfriends. I mean, we all know a man's not going to drop out the sky. <laughs> you put yourself <laughs> out there. So I have friends who are married, and I, I do desire that. I would love to expand my family if it's in God's will, of course. If not, I'm, I'm appreciative of what I have. But I know I have to put forth the effort. So I'm now appreciative. I mean, we're in 2020. I'm, I don't want to have the same results. So you got to work to see better results. So I'm now answering them back and 
putting myself out there. So I'm proud of myself. I love that. You should be proud of yourself. Like, it's not easy to put yourself not at all. in a space where you are vulnerable. And meeting Absolutely. people is always vulnerable. Uh, people don't look at it that way all the time, but yes. it is extremely vulnerable to meet new people, right? It is. It is. Um, to be seen. You know, I feel like you're one of those people. I don't want to read you all too bad, but I feel like you're one of those people that loves to be behind the scenes, uh, loves to uh, work from a distance and and really be able to get stuff done. And you don't even need the credit uh, yes. often in order to feel validated in yourself. Just knowing that the Absolutely. work or the task or the role was done is right. enough. That feels good. Okay. That is true. That is true. I'll yeah. be in front of the camera if need be, like today. I can handle it. But yes, yes. Um, when you're working to help other people, you're not going to always get the credit. So it's fine with me. Well, you got some you got some love on here. I see some people on here loving on you. I, I know. Love I'm that. so happy. It's Martina. <laughs> Your people. Come on, man. <laughs> what, what do you feel like will help you to attract the love that you are looking for right now? Well, I was actually cleaning up my room and I came across this book I had of the law of attraction. So what did I see on Valerie Burton's email? What you focus on expands. So I'm like now making sure I'm constantly thinking positive thoughts so I can change this cycle and we can go into the rest of 2020 with a better mindset. I am so focused on making sure the rest of this year turns out right. I mean, you just, you just gotta literally, when you feel sad, and it's, it's a struggle, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna be fake or anything like that. I don't do a lot of filters in my photos. I'm not even the best yeah. in social media, to be honest. But I not try myself- For others, but not yourself. Yeah. It's, it's a learning process, but it's all about the mindset. You are constantly on a daily basis have to reshift your mindset thoughts, you know? And it depends on who's around you and your mm. environment. Well, it seems like you you have done some homework here. I love that. I try. You are, you are, you <laughs> have, you have, no, you seriously, you have, you have done some work. It's clear because even your, your level of conversation allows you to have a maturity that a lot of singles don't have. Um, it's, it's so, no, you're welcome because I mean, you have to celebrate. I would call that a win, you know, having, having clarity is a win about who you are. Uh, what, so let's, let's talk a little bit about it. Cause I, I would love to at least leave you with something great Absolutely. from this talk. I mean, I love to, I especially love talking with singles. I will tell you that I have a bias towards singles because yeah. <laughs> you know, this, our generation is a generation that is staying single longer, but also having fewer divorces. And that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. Yeah. We're, you know, we have longer, it doesn't mean that we're not breaking up. It just means we're not getting married as fast. So there are fewer marriages. So the documented divorces are lower. Um, so you have a lot of people living together, like cohabitating for 10 yeah. years and married. So um, what does your ideal, ideal relationship look like? That's, that's a good question. Um, I always say this, so I'm not, um, for me, having a good conversation is probably the best way to draw me in. I like a good conversation. I like having some physical interaction, whether you're doing a sport like bowling or top golf, it gets, it's a great way to have interaction as opposed to movies and just eating dinner because you're kind of just sitting there. But anytime you have an interaction with someone, it opens you up laughing the comedy those are good dates and stuff like that so for me yes. to have someone uh, yeah I, I would like somebody attractive <laughs> but looks into everything i mean just having a good conversation someone that understands i'm a kid i have a kid so i'm not gonna bring them around but i i have a you know i have a past and i work understanding i'm gonna be writing stories if some if cnn you so, know caught me back or something let me let me let me pause you because this is a good point. This is something I would do in a love coaching session. I don't, I some coaches don't pause. I pause people because I feel like when you say something, you gotta you gotta get right to it. Okay. Uh, that part where you say I have a past. Why why did you feel like you needed to say that? Um, because people bring it up. Believe it or not, sometimes well, whether it's in the first or second question or first or second date, they always want to go back. Why are you single? Um. Yeah. It's just the question that always seems to come up. So it's just, it's a matter of when to have that conversation. I don't, I don't, I, I think we're, t I think 
you saying that, and, and I want you to think a little harder about why you said that. Okay. Because I don't know if that's why you said that. I think that's the the reason you're giving me, but I don't think that's why you said that. You said specifically, not about people ask me why I'm single. You didn't say that. You said, and I have a past. Yes. So I'm not digging all of your business, especially no, not online. Okay. okay. All right. But um, if there is something in your past that when you say the word or words, my past, stick out. Do you have anything like that, that a moment or a, a situation or anything or um, an occurrence, a feeling? No, I'm actually in a happy place as far as the dating. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, we've all been through things, but yeah, I'm actually in a happy place as far as the dating situation. Um, I think that I've been through things that I've been through. Um, I think that I've been through things that I've been through. I think that I've been through things that I've been through. I think that I've been But I mean, I am a single mom, so I know that I have to answer the, answer those questions. I mean, I've had I've had that come up. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> it's happened. It, it just well, happened. Well, when it comes. The reason why I ask that is because when people use the phrase, and it's only a few a few words, I have a past. It normally is representative of some guard or defense that is. Uh, present now, I know you have a valid one because you have a child, right. and so there is a natural guard there in that situation. That's very clear. Uh, what I want to caution you on, just when you while you're getting to know people, okay. is to position who your child is to you mm -hmm. as a separate entity to who you are as a single woman who is dating. Hmm, you're right. So separate it. Separate okay. the two. Okay. So it's it's okay to have a it's okay to have a guard where you separate your child because that that child is separate, right? Like that if you right. let's 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 separate child. Let's say child is a illness. Okay. 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 That you can separate the illness from who the conversation and the building of the relationship okay right yes. like there may be a guard and not talking about that but it besides that there is freedom and flowing is that there is freedom and flowing in the rest of it mm -hmm. what we often do a lot of us not you you and me included we will because we have one guard allow that guard to guard other areas And so now we become guarded people as opposed to having guarded areas. Does that make sense? Yes. I, it can kind of shift and it can get kind of muddy. I, I realize that. So what you have to do daily is saying, I love my child. I love my child. And I protect my child. I protect my child. Mm -hmm. And in that, your child is one. Like you mentioned earlier about compartmentalizing. Right. That is one compartment. But it is only one compartment. As a single woman, you have so many other things that you need to be vulnerable and open to in order to really connect on the level to attract and keep someone. Thank you. I didn't think about that to make sure they're separate so it doesn't overshadow who I am as a person. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. I, I, I love to uh, share that, especially with uh, single parents, because uh, we we all have ways that we will allow the thing that we most guard. And, and everybody doesn't have a beautiful thing to guard like you. Like you're, a child is a beautiful thing to guard. Many people have secrets. They have issues. They have hang ups. They have uh, hindrances in their life. Uh, for you, you're vulnerable right now about your job situation but a lot of people would consider that to be something to guard yes. and so because of that when they engage people they are so guarded that this is literally what people say you know what i mean like yes like in in the, so this is what people want to see this is what people want to interact with and the best of your ability you have to be able to you notice how you can only see a part of me right yes but the part that you can see is unfiltered yes That is what I'm saying. I like that part. Yeah. That'll yeah, help. Working on that too. Working on that yes, too. Yes, I am a work in progress. Yeah, we all are. And that is the beautiful thing about uh, this this process. I encourage you. Have you been, when you've been responding, have you been willing to talk to multiple people? Absolutely. I actually have. That's why I said I'm Good. giving a full-fledged effort. I'm like responding back to people because 
how else will I meet someone if I don't put myself out there? Absolutely. I, I encourage that when people are in the dating phase mm -hmm. to date often and plentiful. I feel like you attract, you ultimately attract uh, where you are. You attract where you are. Okay. So do you, do you feel like you're making improvements and there are things about you that you want to improve and you know that the partner that you really want is going to need to see those improvements for you to have them? I'm starting to be aware of that. I certainly don't want to date the same, same type. I mean, I'm now, I think from reading different books, I have attracted to different types of men. So now I'm more aware. I've had to research and figure out, okay, I don't want to keep getting the same results, you know? So that means you got to do a little bit more homework. What can I change within myself and be a little bit more open, like you said. So I'm responding to several people at the same time. That is <laughs> good. I want to give, I want to, yeah. Absolutely. I want to give you a little comfort in that. Um, there was something I was I was thinking about the other day about uh, oftentimes we have far less pressure when it comes to maybe a, a trip that we want to go on for a week. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, if the accommodations for the trip for the week weren't amazing, let's say 80 percent of it was amazing. Right. We would not really focus on the 20 percent because the 80% was so good and so unfamiliar and so different than our normal routine that the 80% would occupy our energy and our time. Mm -hmm. We don't do that when it comes to people. Interesting. I didn't think about it that way. Well, here's why. And it's a very logical. For that week, you're only thinking it's for a week. And so you are not, you are not, you don't feel the pressure of thinking a lifetime. You only are thinking, I, I know myself enough for the next week. So for the next week, this trip will be great. I, I'll deal with it. I'll, I'll work it out. It'll, it'll work for me. But when you are thinking about a mate, we have the tendency to not look at it week to week. We look at it like, I got to pick, I got to, I got to, I have to. With only knowing myself with the amount of time I've known myself, mm -hmm. the amount of energy I've had to work on myself, the amount of... Of, of effort I put into myself up until now. I've got to know enough about my future self and what I want in my future in order to say this is the person for my forever. That makes sense, yeah. That's a lot of pressure, right? I think so. We, I know women do it a lot. We, we, do, <laughs> we do it a lot. I'm not going to lie. So, we do so that. Here, here's what I would recommend to you. Start thinking about the opportunities and how you feel, how people make you feel week to week. And if you want to sign up for the trip again the next week, then sign up again. And if it still feels right the next week, sign up again. And if it stops feeling right and stops uh, aligning with what you want in your life and it no longer is the package that you you're, is fitting with where you're going in the next week, reevaluate it. But don't put the pressure of a lifetime when you don't even know what your lifetime looks like. What a lesson we learned in 2020 so far, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. Imagine everybody who signed up with somebody that they said, I love this person because they have this particular job and their job is gone now. I know. Yeah. A lot of people do that though. So you just, you fell in love with the idea of something, something that was, something that could fail. Mm -hmm. We said this morning, I said it earlier to, uh, to the last guest that the reality this morning, what we said was you have got to fall in love with who you are, that you are enough as you are. And it's the same way you got to love other people. You got to love people as they are, not for the way they look. Cause I know you said you want somebody attractive, but I will tell you this. If you really, Hold because we're the real, not my only thing. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know. But I will tell you <laughs> what define attractive, so right? Define attractive because attractive, uh, Ramona was talking about the young lady who didn't like this young man because his nose was too big and she had an opportunity to talk to him and she said his nose was too big and it ended up being Jay Z and she mad now because she didn't talk to him. Yeah, that's why I don't want attractive to be the first thing. I'm very into personality if you can make me laugh 
or we just have let's want to say interaction dates i mean we can't do it so much right now but yeah i think those are things that matter and it looks it's it's just, i mean i just want to be realistic with you i don't ever want to be fake so but personality attracts me all day all i love day. that if i can what is it about you, phone, what is it about your personality that you feel like attracts people to you I try to be positive. I try to be upbeat. I mean, I think that we all have a lot of things going on in our own lives. So I try to encourage other people. My angel always inspired me to make someone feel good. It's mm. the way you make someone feel. It's not just the way they see. But how do they feel when they get off the phone with you? How do they feel? Yes. Like, I feel like I can go take on the world. That's mm. what makes a difference. How do you make somebody feel? And then they'll want to respond back to you. And it's a back and forth conversation. That's how I, I want to be the person that you remember when you get off the phone with me. Mm, come on now. You're talking real good. About, you're talking real good. You're talking about language today. I love it. <laughs> I want to have that effect. That's, the, that's what reminds you, you know? Yes, because I mean, when you think about anything that you you are willing to spend money on or willing to invest in, it is something that gives you an experience that is long lasting, one that leaves a memory. I love that. That was that was good stuff right there. Thank you. You, you could be an honorary love coach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am very hopeful. I am very hopeful for your future. I'm very hopeful I for your love life. I really am. You you have the mind that will attract, and you. I can tell you, done the homework. You have the mind that will attract what is already yours, and. That is, that is honestly, for most singles, the thing that they struggle with the most is that they believe that there is something that they must find. And it's not something you have to find. It is something that will come to you when you are ready. That's and you have to learn. That is, I mean, honestly, like it's not something you have to pray to manifest. Like it needs to grow out of the ground and become. Mm -hmm. Because the person that you will ultimately fall in love with and choose for your life had to have already been born. They had to have been born, right? Like it's not some clone that will just be born in their, their 35. Like it's, it's, that's not how it happens. So they're, they've already existed. They already are, are in, in a physical body. Yes. And so it is just the timing of things and it is being ready to receive, you know, like imagine, imagine, that your parents want to give you a brand new, imagine as a child, your parents want to give you a brand new car. Yes. And you have not done any work on coordination, just coordination. Mm -hmm. So you, you have gotten to the right age, but you haven't, you haven't learned how to crawl or walk right. or anything like, and yet you want to drive. And there are a lot of people who are, who are literally crawling right now and they want a full relationship that requires the full use of all of their limbs so and it the, is preparedness yeah, right. mm -hmm. it is preparedness so you you look prepared my dear i mindset i'm trying to change the mindset i want the rest of this year to be great i do so i i know it starts with me you know and just changing my aura and just making sure i come across as being positive you know well you got that thank you you really do what is one thing that you are still working on to better yourself right now i still want to um i still want to get better at skill set better at technology learning more um when i left my when, when i left turner i was in business systems and um business systems and technology and one thing I learned from my boss, I just thought she was so good at what she did. She was the VP of our division and she just tackled so many tasks and got it done in one day. That to mm -hmm. me is amazing to get through your priority list and get so many different things done. Do you know how much you can do to get everything off your list and get everything done yes. in a day? That's a great skill to me. So Absolutely. I, I want to learn more of, if I need to do different new apps or different things out there. That's why I write things down on my little notepad as I talk to you. I want to be better at that because you can get so many different things done. And then I can pass that skill on to my child. And it's like, look, mom is out here doing it, you know? Absolutely. So one of the things I will give you that has helped me, uh, first of all, I make my schedule for the next day the night before. 
Okay. Uh, that helps me to prioritize my day. So when I wake up, there's less time planning and there's more time centering so that I can then just begin activating. Yes. Uh, that helps. And then also what it does is to prepare the night before allows your mind subconsciously while you sleep to begin working on things. You understand that your mind is not resting just because you are. And so it allows your mind to become, come up with answers and solutions so that when you wake up, you actually move a lot faster than if you had just thought of it automatically the day of and tried to process. So night before, that's, that's something I learned that a lot of like very wealthy and, and well-off successful uh, CEOs do because they understand how the mind can work for them while they're sleeping. It's getting the most out of this, this CPU right. that we call the brain, you know? Um, so that's one thing. Another thing would be to really start mapping out how long things take you to do them. Ooh, so if you, if you are like doing an article and you know it takes about an hour and a half, two hours to do an article, right. then you put that on your calendar, hour and a half to two hours, you map that out so that you can realistically see how much you can get done in a day. We often get overwhelmed with things on our to-do list because you may have 10 things, but realistically you can only do five that day. So when you put five as opposed to 10, you actually don't feel as overwhelmed by your schedule because you, you don't feel like you failed that day. You feel like you achieved. I like that advice. That way I can feel like I've got so much accomplished in a day. Yes. Yes. That that definitely would make a lot of difference in my life. <laughs> Getting it's little things, things done. I'm telling you. It's little things. And the little tweaks make the biggest difference. Like I use my calendar avidly. Like mm -hmm. I will schedule everything I do. When I get up and, and I, I spend 30 minutes posting, that is on my morning schedule. Mm. Like my IG post or my Facebook post, that's on my Scheduling them. Yes. My prayer time is scheduled. Yeah. My meditation time is scheduled. Uh, my time, even when I'm eating with my partner or we're doing things like that, that it, what, when I'm going into it, I put it on my calendar. Because when I look back, I want to see the time that we spent, the energy that was put in. Like, I can't say, oh, I, I can look back and say, oh, I didn't invest enough time into the things I really value. Uh, I can I can see that more. Uh, if I'm wasting too much time, I can see how much time I wasted. So you so, keep track of things. It helps you to feel like you accomplish things in a day and you get track of it. It's a part of, you know, some would call it productivity, and it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I call it a part of my self-love routine. Self-love routine. Okay. Yes, because it. Yeah, here's, here's how I look at it. By tracking what I'm investing in, my time into and my energy into, things that I love and appreciate better me, that is self-love. Self-love, yeah. And by doing things that are anti that, I know if I can minimize those things that don't speak to what I love and and speak to bettering me, if I can minimize those things, I can I can see how I'm minimizing it better by tracking how I'm doing more of the things I love. I like that idea. I'm It'll gonna help. I promise sure. you. A self-love routine. Absolutely. That's it. And it really, you think it's just scheduling. Like it sounds bad when right, you say yes, scheduling. You're right. But Change really your it's your self-love. You could, the night, you can look back at your day and say, look at all the things I did for me. I can incorporate that quickly because I I'm an organized person, so I, I like that idea already. Look at that. Hey, come I on! Do. I do. It'll help you. It really will because you can look back a few days and say, you know what? Because on a bad day, you can look back and say, but I but I I, I went for a walk yeah. with myself. It was thirty minutes. You know, I took that time. It'll cause your mind to go back to that walk and the feeling that you felt in that walk. You can say, I went online and I met some new people. You can look back at how that felt when you are feeling like a little bit afraid or passive or, or nervous about meeting new people. You can say, but I did it. I accomplished it. I went to that event. I walked that red carpet. I did those things. It was challenging. It felt awkward, but I did it. I overcame it. And in all of that, that is your self-love routine. You are speaking more of that love and building that confidence and becoming the woman that you really want to be. 
and that is very true because I have to psych myself up and say, you know what, I got to get out here and do it. The introvert side of me make me want to do this, but then I know I have to get out there. But now you got me hashtag and self love routine, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use that. Oh, let's do it. That's what we're gonna do. I love it. Go, Ron. The people are shouting for you. They're, know, they're celebrating like you. Like you, got, you got the vomit team going on your side. I love it. Well, look, love, I appreciate you. And I really want, tell us where we can follow you and how we can stay connected with you to really soak up more of this positive energy that you're putting out there in the universe. Well, first, thank you. I've been following your broadcast. I saw Divine last week. And I love her. Amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> She, me and her text all the time, recipes and stuff. So it's really cool to do that, to see that in fruition. You can follow me on Instagram at Vonda, V-O-N-D-A underscore M-O-N-E, Vonda Monet. Facebook, Vonda M, capital M, Miles. Um, Twitter, Vonda Monet, one word. But those are the main channels. I'm, I'm on Instagram. I'm doing the, you know, mom. I try to support my friends, shout them out, looking for jobs, doing all at the same time. But like you said, I'm going to make sure I'm organized the night before so I can get my task done. Hello. Because I remember what you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I celebrate you. And I look, if, if I never had hope for anyone else to find true love, I do believe that you are the model example of someone who is on the right path with the right mentality to find love and be happy for the rest of however long that is meant to last. I do believe that for you and much success on being a strong black woman and a wonderful mother. Keep doing your thing and know that you have the support of so many, including myself. Thank you. That means a lot. I am absolutely thankful for so many a great network of friends and, and special people in my life. I, I'm appreciative to everything. Absolutely. I, I, well, we, we got you. And if you need more support, feel free uh, on my site. I got my online dating course, uh, Love at First Swipe, to help you with that online dating. Yes. Since you've been on Bumble and all those places, yes. uh, that'll help you lock into how to use those more effectively as a tool to uh, nail down somebody and really connect with the right person. But just know you're doing the right stuff. You got the right routine. Keep doing it, love. And again, I got your back. Let's Let's go, all right? All right. I'm going to make 2020 great, right? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's been great. Thank you so much for your time. And look, y'all keep following Vonda and following her journey. And we're going to see very, very soon a little something that's uh, that's tan line on her finger. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Thank you so much. Thank you for Absolutely, having me. Absolutely, love. <laughs> you be blessed. You too. Thank you. <laughs>